Hello everybody, I hope everyone is doing well. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you my tips and tricks to make your makeup last on those really hot summer days. I do live in Canada where it doesn't get the hottest here in the summers, like I guess like high 20s, we are super lucky to get that. But I do use these techniques every time I go to Hawaii or on tropical vacations. These are the techniques I pull out of the darkness to make my makeup look good all day in the sunshine. Today's video is extra special because a portion of it is sponsored by M Cosmetics, so a huge thank you to them. I always feel so honored when a brand I love so, so much sponsors a video. It's just super heart warming to me so a huge thank you to them once again so before we get into today's video I would love for you to subscribe if you aren't already it would mean so much to me and let's get to it so first things first is skincare. I have most of it on right now. What I use today and what I've been using for the last while. I first go in with a little bit of this from First Aid Beauty. It's the Ultra Repair Oat and Hemp Seed Oil Dry Oil. And this has been really great. I love how it's a dry oil so it doesn't make me feel really slippery. It feels very undetectable on the skin. It's really nice. I've been loving that. And then I also have this Niacinamide Brightening Cream. I said it. I said niacinamide. Look at me go. She's growing by First Aid Beauty as well. I have been loving this. This is the first eye cream I actually really like under makeup. And then for my moisturizer, I use the Tatcha Water Cream. And look at this. I finished it today. So that's all I have on right now. I wanted to physically apply my sunscreen in this video because this is the number one most important step of your routine in the morning. If you don't have this underneath, what you doing? You need to change that because SPF will keep you young, protect you, all that good stuff. And this one's great because it's tinted, so it doesn't leave a white cast. And it's also a really nice texture because it feels really nice and thin, but then it dries down into like a powdery texture, so it doesn't make you look really oily or anything. And it also doesn't have any coverage. It just has that pigment just to make sure it's not gonna leave any white cast behind, which is really, really important to me. So make sure you get your ears and everything like that too. And my mom and my grandma always tell me to put it on the back of my hand, so May May, this one's for you. Now that that has kind of soaked in and kind of uh, changed to that powdery texture, I'm now going to move on to the makeup products. And I'm pulling out my Milk Hydro Grip. I take this out during the summer or if I'm going on vacation to a hot and sweaty place because this stuff is incredible at gripping down your makeup so it lasts all day. It's great for oily skin as well. So I'm gonna put a generous amount mostly in the center, concentrating the most where I usually get oily. So now moving on to foundation, I'm going to be using the one that I've been gravitating towards the most recently, and that's the Screen Queen from Milani. If you are someone who usually gravitates towards a foundation that's a little bit more full coverage, um, and you wanna use something a little bit lighter coverage in the summer, I tend to always go for something a little bit more lightweight or natural looking for the summer. I'm gonna apply the tiniest amount of this, just something to correct the whole face. But if you wanna see if you enjoy kind of like a lighter coverage moment, uh, you can cut your foundation with a primer. A big tip is to not use moisturizer. I know that's a big tip going around in the makeup industry, but moisturizer is meant to sink into your skin and whenever I did that I always got breakouts just because when you add your foundation in there it's getting absorbed into your skin so I would stay away from that and cut your foundation 50-50 with a primer you enjoy and that way you can see if you like the lighter coverage look. I've been reaching for this foundation a lot more over my more high-end foundations. This one is just really really good. So now I'm just going to take my beauty blender, take down the excess and remove any brush strokes if there are any, and this will also help to make it look more skin-like as well. Now that that's on, it's time for concealer, and I don't really have any tips for concealer. I don't find that concealer is an issue for hotter days. Just go in with a little bit, um, just to correct your under eyes. Your under eyes don't really sweat or get disrupted too, too much, so I'm just going to apply this like usual, and I'm using the Kosas Concealer, and I use the shade 04. Now, before I add powder right under my eyes to set them, 
Uh, something I like to pull out of the darkness as well for the hotter days is the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. While the complexion is all done, I like to give my skin a good spritz and this helps so, so much with the longevity. So sandwiching your complexion between these two sets me up for success. Whenever I go on touring days around Hawaii and I use these two things, my makeup lasts till I get home that night. So this is a tip that I would highly recommend. So I'm just gonna spritz my face. And I'm just gonna fan that a little bit. Or another way I like to use the setting spray is I'll spray the end of my sponge while I'm doing my foundation as well. So it kind of mixes into the foundation and that works really well as well. So I'm just gonna let that kind of sink in a little bit. And then to make sure my peach fuzz kind of lays back down and it's not so accentuated, I'll take my sponge and just super lightly flatten them. <laughs> Now it's time to set the under eye with a little bit of powder. I'm just going to be using the one that I've been loving so much recently, the Hourglass Veil. I'm just going to take a little bit of this to begin with. Uh, I don't like to use that many powder products when it comes to heat proof makeup, especially around the perimeter of my face, just because that's where I tend to sweat a lot. <laughs> But in the center of my face, I find that it's okay. The center mostly just gets oily, so my skin can handle a little bit of powder and it doesn't break up or separate or get weird. I just worry about the hairline. If a bead of sweat drips, it will leave a trail. I don't like that, so creams work a lot better for that. So now I'm just gonna let that sit for a minute and I'm going to be doing my brows off camera, but I am going to be filming an IGTV showing how I do my brow routine because I do need to tint them now. So I'll show you everything that goes into my brows. So keep an eye out for that, but I'm going to jump off. So please enjoy the brow intermission. Okay, brows are on, and these are the two products I pretty much use every day. The Anastasia Brow Wiz and the M Cosmetics Brow Cream. I use the shade Granite in the brow pen, and I use the shade Espresso in the brow cream. Now it's time to bronze up the skin, and I'm going to be using a cream bronzer just because, like I said before, uh, if I apply any powders on the perimeter of my face on really hot days, it just becomes a disaster. So I'm going to be using a cream, but I like to have a little bit of longevity within that as well. So I'm going to be using my good old trusty Huda Beauty Tantour. I use the shade Fair, by the way. I'm just going to use a little bit of this to define my cheeks. This is the Sephora Precision Foundation Brush. I've had this cream bronzer the longest as well, so I just trust it a lot more than the newer ones as well. So this is what my go-to is on hot days. And it also has a matte finish, so it has a little bit more of a longevity quality to it as well. But it's not going to leave those makeup streaks just in case if I get sweaty. I like creams on hotter days a lot. Just because if things start moving around, you can easily touch it up and fix it up like it, nothing gets set in stone. So any time of day you can touch it up with a finger if it gets kind of muddled or anything and it's completely fine. That's the beauty of cream products and the number one reason why I'm such a big fan of them. So I'm just gonna take a little bit across the bridge of my nose just for a sun-kissed look. Okay, for my highlighter, I'm just going to use whatever cream one I like. And I haven't used the Marc Jacobs uh, Do You Do Drops in I don't know how long. So I'm going to be using a little bit of that. I just squeezed out so, so much. Oh my gosh. It's enough to cover like 20 faces. Just a nice subtle glow and this formulation is nice because it does dry down so it's going to kind of stay where I put it instead of migrate in the hot sun. Now I'm going to move on to blush and I'm going to be using the M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow Magic Hour Blush. Like I said earlier, I don't mind using powders in the center of my face just because the worst that happens on a hot day in this area is I get oily. So I like to use powder blushes for these types of days because I kind of use it as a setting powder. So it hits two birds with one stone. I hate that saying. I regret saying that. I don't hit birds. 
with any stones, just my love. But anyways, I'm gonna be using this brush, BH Cosmetics number two. Just going to dust that in the center right here. And it's gonna act as a setting powder, so it's perfect. But it also adds a lot of glow as well, so it continues with the theme as well. The last thing I'll do with the complexion, just in case if I feel like I need that extra security, is I'll take a tiny bit of powder, and when I say tiny, I mean the smallest amount of powder possible. I'll usually run my brush through the cap, even on the cap there's a little too much. So I'll just take a touch of it, tap off the excess, and I will only use it in the center of my face, not touching any of the outskirts. So I'll just put a little bit in the center here, down the bridge of my nose and on the cheeks right here and there we go that's the complexion i am going to be doing a little eye look this video is definitely more skin focused so i'm not going to go into detail with what i'm going to be doing for the eyes but i am going to be using this beautiful palette here the divine skies eyeshadow palette from m cosmetics this is just such a nice everyday palette this is one that frequents in my makeup bag as well, time to time. It has all of my everyday tones in here. So I'll zoom you guys in once I prime my eyes and then we'll do a little quick eye look. I forgot a really important step. Before I move on to the eyes, because whenever I spray a setting spray on top of my eyeshadow, it tends to crease no matter what. So I like to spray once again once I have my bronzer and everything down. So I'm just gonna spritz a bit. lock it in and then I take a damp cloth this is just an erase your face face cloth with just water and I kind of wipe off whatever's on my eyelid just so it doesn't crease my stuff you know I'm first gonna take this brown shade on this Royal Langnickel crease brush and I'm just gonna throw this into the crease I'm taking the bomb 17 brush from Royal Langnickel with the same shade and I'm just gonna build it up kind of like in a halo eye effect I'm gonna take this shade right here and for my inner corner highlight just this shade right here Here's a quick overlook of the eyes, just quickly. I know this video is more about the complexion, but I really like this look, it's cute. Uh, mascaras I used, Glossier Lash Slick and Pat McGrath Fetish Eyes Mascara. For the lips, I want to do a little mixology moment because they came out with a little set. These were two previous shades that they had already, but they came out in a set uh, to do like an ombre look. Um, I actually did an ombre lip look tutorial on my IGTV. I can link it in the description if you want to check it out. It's just a little quick tutorial on how. But these two shades mixed together are so freaking cute. It's the two true glosses in the shade Mochi Mochi and Lotus Blossom. I'm just going to create a little mix of both of them on the back of my hand. How cute is that? Um, I'm going to line my lips with a little bit of the MAC Oak Pencil. This one is the closest one that I own to my natural lip color. So I'm just going to define them quickly. It's definitely a little peachy, but it's definitely more pink leaning. It's really cute. It's something I don't really use that often, but I really like it. So here is the final look all complete. Uh, the lips and the eyes were just a little fun touch. This video is definitely focused on the skin. I really hope these tips helped you. Please let me know if you have your own heat proof tips. Leave them in the comments down below. This is how I do my makeup for those really hot days and it really, really makes a difference. And before I go, another huge thank you to M Cosmetics for sponsoring a portion of today's video. It means so much to me. But that is all for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope these tips were helpful. If they were, please give this video a like. It would help me out so very much. I will make sure to link all of these products in the description down below as always, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye!